and all I'm going to do is brush it on top. You okay, so we have a change of plans. A good oh no. I mean, is it really a trebuchet video without a good blooper in there? Probably not. For this project, we are using Dollar Tree supplies. So we have these color your own ornaments that came in a little carrot, an egg, a bunny. So I chose these. I am going to use my own ribbon, I think, but it also came with this kind of jute twine. And then I went ahead and grabbed some permanent Dollar Tree vinyl. First, we're gonna hop on over to Creative Fabrica where I get all of my cut files, designs. We're going to grab a font, upload that to Cricut Design Space, write the names, and cut it out on our Cricut. So let's get started. I'm going to jump over to the section of fonts and I'm looking for more of a script font. Now, I use the yearly access, so I actually only pay $4.99 for the month, which is a really good deal compared to me paying 19 to $29 a month like I was before. So I highly recommend you check it out. I'll leave it linked down below so you automatically get the discount, but it's a really, really good deal because they have millions of graphics, fonts, cut files, all of those things you can possibly imagine. So let's decide which one we want to use. I kind of like this thick one, but I also really like this cursive. So Maybe I'll download both of them and then see which one kind of suits the best with Dollar Tree vinyl It really works better with a thicker font now that I've finished installing the font to my computer Which I've shown you how to do in this video right here And I will leave that linked down below as well in case you are a Cricut beginner wanting to learn We're going to select text I'm going to go ahead and write out the name or word that I'm wanting to put on there. And then we're going to select the font. So I'm going to go on over to font, system fonts, and I just need to go and type in the one that I've downloaded, which is called handwritten. So you're seeing it's not popping up yet. Simple fix. That's because Cricut Design Space was actually open when I downloaded this font. So you're going to go on over to view, select reload, and then now it will be updated onto your Cricut Design Space. So if you've uploaded it to your computer, you've installed it to your computer, and it's still not showing on Cricut Design Space, that is the step you need to take. Now I can go back into the fonts, go into system, and type in the font name, and it will pop up. Nice and easy. I'm actually going to save it as well because I really like that font. And I actually like how that turned out. That's super cute. Once I'm done installing the font, creating my design, and making all of them to size by measuring my blank, I can go ahead and select make it and we're ready to go. The material setting I clicked was just vinyl. It's just regular vinyl. And then we're going to go ahead and put this onto the mat. Again, you can use any old vinyl. I just chose to do Dollar Tree one for the purposes of the video. I like to kind of use a variety of different types of materials for crafters that maybe are just beginning. And if you are a Cricut beginner, I suggest you start off with materials and blanks from the dollar store because if you mess it up, it's not a huge deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up my Cricut. It's going to cut it out. And then I will be back when it's time to unload this and get weeding. So we're gonna select the flashing C. We're good to go. This is done cutting, you'll see the flashing arrow, so we're ready to unload it. Now, with Dollar Tree vinyl, you're going to notice this. It starts kind of peeling up, especially with these kind of thinner designs and fonts. So I am going to try pressing it down because like I said, for this video, we're really trying to do Dollar Tree stuff, but you're not gonna get the best quality with it, right? Now it's time to weed out our project. So we're going to start here. I think I'm just gonna start with the easiest name of them all. The letters are just way easier and it's a little thicker. So this one, just make sure you're peeling up slowly because it's just not the best vinyl to be honest with you. But again, if you're on a budget, it does do the trick. So we have that weeded out. I know it's kind of hard to tell because it's white on white. I am going to be using some transfer tape that I've already used before. I always reuse it when I can saves you money and uh, it, honestly when it's a little less sticky it's even better so second time around you use it is a little bit better so put the transfer tape on there the transfer tape I use is actually the duck brand shelf liner from Amazon it's not even transfer tape and I'm kind of deciding what way I want it so I think it would be cute this way it kind of has like the little bit of a burnt edge I'm going to flip it upside down and let gravity help me by just peeling it up simply like so. Okay, kind of wiggle back and forth if you need to. Then I'm going to place it on here and I could totally just leave the vinyl on here. I could have painted it before, left the vinyl on and that would have been super, super cute. 
but I kind of want to leave like a little bit of a different effect where I paint over top and I'm going to peel off this vinyl at the end. So it's almost like a little stencil that I'm creating. Kind of up to personal preference, but I just thought that would give it a really nice final look. Now the tricky thing is trying to get your vinyl to stick on this type of blank because it has trouble gripping onto it. So a couple little tricks you can do if you're doing, you know, something that's a little trickier than this bold font like I'm using. Go ahead and put a thin layer of clear Mod Podge on top. You could also do your paint layer first, like one layer of paint if you wanted. Like originally I was going to kind of do the bottom layer one color and something else. And then that way it has something to grip onto when you're putting the vinyl on. So now that that's on there, I'm going to make sure it's pressed down pretty good. And then I have my colors. So I wanted to show you a couple of options. When you use a brown acrylic paint and you water it down a little bit, you put it on top and then you're just going to take a paper towel and immediately wipe it away. It gives it a really pretty kind of stained washed wood color and it looks very professional. It's like you stained the wood. So I want to do that effect with the pink and see what it looks like. I have tons of these blanks, so it's okay if I mess it up. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of just go for it, see what happens. I'm going to go grab a little bit of water to do it and I'll be back. And all I'm going to do is brush it on top. You can kind of sponge it down around the letters so that it doesn't go underneath. I'm gonna put it on like fairly quickly because you don't want it to dry fairly quickly like so when it's one solid color because these kind of Dollar Tree blanks, the wood really just absorbs it, right? It's just like cheap chipboard almost. So we have that one done. We're gonna let it dry and then we will come back in after and take a look. You can paint the edges if you want to give it a little bit more of that professional look, but I mean, you could really just sell these and like how cute would that be? I'm gonna go ahead and finish the other ones and then we're going to let it dry, peel it up and see what they look like. Okay, so we have a change of plans, but I wanted to show you as you know, I like to keep my little mistakes or my findings in my video. So I'm going to peel this up and show you. It didn't do the clean kind of stencil that I wanted because of the blank. It kind of just bleeds into the wood, which is fine, totally fine. So what we're gonna do is fill this in with paint. It's gonna dry very quickly, so that's okay. And then I'm going to put the vinyl on top and see what that looks like. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of fill that over with the paint. Way too much on there. Whoopsie. So we're going to give it a good, a good. Oh, no. I mean, is it really a trebuchet video without a good blooper in there? Probably not. I ended up going back in and just finishing painting the rest of them. I chose three different colors and I made sure to paint the front and the back. Then I cut out two different colors of vinyl. I decided instead of the stencil root, it was better to just paint it first and then apply the vinyl. Now, if you have a better blank than me or if you add a layer of paint first, that method might work, but I was just going with it today. I am layering these to create an offset. You're just going to take the first layer with your transfer tape, apply it to the second, and then you can easily move it to the blank. So this is a great little technique to just elevate the final product. And this is also a great method if you're looking to sell these items, it just makes it look a lot more professional. Now I'm taking this really pretty ribbon that I found at the Dollar Tree. I have a pink one and a white one that I have from Christmas, and this is the final look. They're so cute. Can you guess what I'm gonna make next? 